rejoice and have that victory too. That's the reason to clap our hands right there. This isn't hard. This ain't about performing. This is about knowing God and making him known. So I declare that over you right now in Jesus' name. I declare that God is doing great things through you, in you, and to you. We're called from city to city, state to state, nation to nation. I declare that you will influence thousands. You will influence thousands. Your voice will be heard because you will be a sound voice in the midst of chaos. You will declare this gospel. You will make disciples of men, teaching to teach to teach, and you will make a difference in this world. Hallelujah. For generations to come, I declare legacy over your life. Legacy that long after you, amen, there will still be a remnant of what you stood for and who you know. Doing what Isaiah 58 says, we have been restoring path to dwell in. Amen. And God's a God of nations, visitations, and generations. And so I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. That is who we are. That's what we've been purposing called to do. And that is what we'll do. Amen. You agree with that? Clap your hands and tell the Lord I receive that now. I agree with you now for that to be so over my life and my children's life and my children's children's lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, good to see you tonight. I'm glad you are here. And uh, the Lord is truly uh, have some great things for us. I, I want to, uh, you know, we, we, we talked to you on Sunday about faith finds the way and fear finds excuses or makes excuses. And uh, I just want to know. How has the Lord troubled you in that? And when you hear me say troubled you, I mean, what more did he say to you? What, how did he bring any corrections to maybe a thought process, uh, to a behavior, to an attitude uh, that we may have had, even to the place where you found yourself, you know what, I've been making an excuse uh, for me not operating in this place of victory. As LaQuisha was praying, we have now faith. Our next is now because we have now faith. I know what the word says. I know what's been promising me. And now I'm going to do due diligence. I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my integrity. I'm going to guard the vision. Amen. And I'm not going to look back. I'm, pre- I'm not looking back. I'm pressing toward the mark of the pride of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to get my faith up and uh, I know how to do that. And I'm going to embrace the supernatural because all of these things is about us embracing the supernatural. Okay. Not being afraid of it and knowing we were birthed into it. So somebody just maybe share with me, you know, even even something greater the Lord has said, because we don't know everything. But I guarantee you, I say what he shares and then we can we can go on from there, and uh, because some total of who we are is greater than who we are individually, amen. I'm gonna say that again: the sum total of who we are together is greater than anything we could ever be individually. Okay, yeah. So anybody, anybody, the word of the Lord on Sunday, stewardship. No, I will. I would say for me, I'm trying to get away from my husband because we both on here now. I want the echo, okay. but I would say for me, um, just taking away <laughs> my excuses, <laughs> like the worry that's on the inside of you doesn't even allow you to make an excuse when you believe. So either you mm. believe God or you don't. So it's coming to a point where why are we still talking about this? Either you believe me or you don't. Let's take away all the excuses. I gave you power. You can do what I said you can do. Now let's go. So I would say for me, just taking away my excuses. Mm. There's no more. I no longer have the capacity for this. There's no more. This is just too much for me. There's no more of that. Because as you said, faith finds a way. 
Mm -hmm. And as you always say, my sufficiency is not of me, it's of him. So just taking away my excuses, changing my perspective when it comes to certain things. Mm. I'm finding balance when it comes to certain, the reality is your priorities are out of order or, you know, bringing you into those realities of what you're just really dealing with. So taking away your, my excuses. Excellent. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. And that's, that's maturity right there. That's just growing up. Either I believe God or I don't. That's just it. I'm either in hope or faith. It's okay to be in hope. Don't get discouraged. But now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And we've got to know that this is what he set before me. I can have it and I can have it now. Yes, dear. Yeah, what what stood out with me, Bishop, when you were saying that, uh, you know, losing all control. And that's where I'm at now. Uh, you know, you try to be in control. You try to, well, I'm going to speak for myself. I'm in control. I know how to make it happen. You know, I might get, <laughs> get up at five in the morning, but. I know how to make it happen, but at the same time, I just weighing and tearing on my body. Mm. And, and you know, uh, just trying to do stuff on my own. And, and right now, I'm just losing control of all of that, you know, and I'm just embrace, in, embracing prayer. You say mm. embrace prayer. And so when, when things show up now, a, a, a situation of whatever's going on in my life, I just try to keep up keep a flow of praying in the Holy Ghost and and and, and seeking God and, and things showing up, but I just keep moving, Bishop. You know, a weapon might come, but it ain't going to prosper. I don't let nothing stagnate me no more. My mind don't go in no negative mode like this might happen. Fear, I mean, you know, if, if I don't stay in that lane now, fear will come in and try to grip you because the thing that shows up, they don't be favorable. They don't look favorable. They look like, you know, <laughs> I mean, different different things is going on, but uh, just losing control and embracing prayer for me. Uh, a lot of things have showed up this week, and, and I mean, I've been staying in faith, and, and I've been in prayer, like you said, uh, son, that, you know, pray, uh, seek God, ask questions get somebody to pray with me and like God told me to give you a call. I would just call myself running something across your desk. But God had a word for me and, mm. and that word he had for me and that broke everything off me then. Mm. When God's speaking, you know, I mean that 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 kind of freed me of the things that I was I was I was going through at the time. And so it again it, it restored my confidence. It increased my faith and 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 you know I can just keep moving now. Don't don't never let nothing stack. Do what you got to do to keep moving. Mm, that's good. That's good. That's good. Amen. And and we got to know that faith and fear has the same definition. Believing in your heart that something's gonna happen. Let's choose faith. Let's choose faith in God. Let's choose agreeing with God. Amen. Yeah. And because we're creative, remember, embracing the supernatural. The scripture tells us in Mark 11, we have whatsoever we say. Do we believe that? And do we believe that there is the same power working in us, amen, that raised Jesus from the dead? So if this power that's working in us can raise a dead man, it surely can deal with the situations and circumstances that we may be facing in this life. Ultimately, death is something that a lot of people fear because that's the, the that's finality. That's 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 it. It's done. Okay. And many times we have things that come up, just a circumstance, a situation, or whatever. And we know we got enough power for that. And the scriptures even tell us if we had need to, we can raise the dead. Right? So we have to believe that and stay in constant fellowship. I heard Deacon Terry say that, you know, he would pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Ghost until the peace was restored, 
That has to be our response when weapons form. Did y'all hear that? Our response when a weapons form is not to talk about the weapon that form, but pray in the Holy Spirit that the weapon don't prosper. You got to get an attitude to where I'm not going to give you 30 seconds of my of my life worrying when I can be worshiping. Do you know that when you be in the prayer in the spirit, you automatically go into worship? You automatically go into the fact that, God, I believe in your ability to be God. You automatically engage with the supernatural. Come on, y'all better clap your hands right there. You don't have to give the enemy 30 seconds of your mind, of your heart, of your life, of your time. Come on. Some folk, you need to just, you know, they call and they give you information. Okay, you know, <laughs> Get off of that. Don't let them keep going on and on and on and on and on. You're giving them too much time. You could have been worshiping. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? Oh, my. That is an attitude that we must have to continue in this, this continuous power of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural is point upon our life. Because we're talking about you've been born for the supernatural and into the supernatural. And you are to live supernaturally. And we have to come into agreement with that. And the first thing you got to do is renew your mind to the supernatural and then allow the Holy Spirit to develop the faith for the supernatural. And with that, you got to guard your heart with all diligence. Okay. Guard your heart with all diligence. How, how would one know that hmm, my heart's been breached? How, how would one know the, the heart's been breached? I want to see you Bible scholars because we got to have, Lucretia was praying, we got spiritual intelligence. See, the enemy operates on our ignorance. And I say that very respectfully, our lack of understanding and our lack of faith. Okay. So how will we know that our hearts been breached? Think of it theologically. Come on, Stephanie. Bishop, my response to that is, um, I know when my heart is breached, when I am no longer confessing the word, like out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. So if I am not saying what God has said, if I am not saying his word, his mm. promises, his will, you know, if I'm not speaking life, then my heart has been breached, whether that be breached with my emotions Breach with my um with my intentions, breach with my wants, my desires, breached with offense, breached with whatever's going on in the world, breach with what I've seen, the lust of the eye, the lust of my flesh, and the pride of life. Okay. I'm not speaking what he has said when his word is not coming out of me, is not producing the life that he came to give me, then my heart has been breached. And we must know that the heart and the mind is interchangeable in the word of God. Come on. So then I got to make sure that I'm thinking the right way. If I'm not even thinking the right way, then my heart has been breached. Ah. So as a man thinketh, so is he. So that's how I know. Just excellent. That is excellent. Anybody got a question about that? She can explain that to you even further. We must get this. Because the battle is won and lost in the mind. And the heart is the central place of all of your being, spiritual and physical being. Amen. That is the central place of all of your being, the heart. The heart is spirit and it's also flesh. Okay. Pastor Sam said, you stop showing up. Yeah, you start being silent. You might not be saying nothing, 
but you stop showing up. You won't even proclaim the promise no more. Come on. You you won't you you're not where the promise can manifest. You don't show up for prayer anymore. You don't show up to worship God. Come on. Now, I ain't talking about going to no building. I'm talking about what you do privately. Mm. See, because if we're not doing things privately, when we come and show up publicly, we just dare to perform. Because it's really not who we are. Barbara Randolph, I see your hand. Yes, sir. We also, when our heart is breached, we're not praying in the spirit like we ought to, neither. Yeah. We, we start slacking off. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, I'll do it in a minute. Or, you know, instead of doing it right then, the moment that you know that your heart has been breached, that you know that, you know, I'm going to use it. You said an ugly word. Okay. You know that your heart's been breached. Mm -hmm. There's something ugly about somebody else. Your heart's been breached because you are mm. not thinking things about your fellow man. Whoa. No matter what it is. So, yeah, and then we stop praying like we ought. This is good. This is good. Now, this is, this is, this is maturity. This is not making excuses. This is finding the way. And Jesus told us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't that right? He's the way. And all the solutions to our, our scenario, situation, conditions, state of being is through, is in, uh, is, has been dealt with through his life, his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And through the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is the uh, overseer of the supernatural. I would say that's my, that's me, the overseer of the supernatural. He makes sure that that you you know truth. He makes sure, praise God, that that you have the fruit of the spirit and gifts of the spirit. And he's there to remind you, bring all things to remembrance. He's there to empower you. He's there to intercede for you. He's making sure that the will of God is known to you. He's there to bring revelation, knowledge, and insight to you. Amen. Come on, Brother Dean. Thank you, Bishop. The, the, the moment I know that my heart is not in the right place, I've hardened my heart, I don't have a spirit of gratitude. When mm -hmm. I get to the point, I forget how good God has been to me and what he's yet doing. Um, sometimes we, we don't recognize the supernatural in our lives because our heart has been hardened. Mm -hmm. Just the fact uh, that the fact that I wasn't what I was yesterday is I'm going to pray by itself. And I, I know for myself personally, uh, I get like that sometimes, right? That's what you said, worship over whining. You know that whining mm -hmm. spirit you talked about? Mm -hmm. At that point, I know my heart has been breached. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to, uh, one, one, of, one of the things I used to wonder about the biblically speaking is why did God harden Saul's heart? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I always wanted that. I said, why would God do that, right? And then also I saw the reaction of Saul, right? And so uh, as, I, as I began to study in my own self, instead of the Bible coming to knowledge of it, uh, the heart and the heart, God really didn't do that for, he had a reason for everything, right? And, but the main thing, we are covered by grace and our heart and don't have to be hard now. The Holy Spirit God, can change that, can, can, can change our heart uh, as, as instantaneously. And that's why that's what I have to say about that. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Saul's attitude allowed his heart to get hard. And that's what that's what happens to us. Our heart can begin and stop not being molded and pliable to God any longer because of our disconnect um, from constant fellowship in the word with the Holy Spirit, our prayer life, okay, and a staying in agreement with God. Uh, I think 
Stephanie mentioned getting offended about something. You know, your heart's been breached. Okay. Wrong attitude about something. Your heart's been breached. Or they mentioned not being grateful, uh, appreciative to God, uh, you know, comparing yourself to someone else, uh, things of that nature. Man, that will, that will, that will definitely begin to throw a monkey wrench in your game. Okay. Um, it's called covetousness, competition. Okay. And whining, as you mentioned, Brother Dean, we, we got to know what it means to whine. Uh, why me? Uh, not embracing the fact that it's working together for my good. Making an excuse to, to not walk in victory. Just, just know. And you got to be careful of your environment because most people hadn't been taught how to win and worship. They've been taught how to whine and make excuses. Okay, that, that's kind of a culture because it brings about sympathy and empathy. It's also manipulative. Okay, come on, Barbara. Yes, sir. I wanted to say too that you know we around people all the time, and when you you gave a, a, a not a sermon, but you had talked about this. Can you love people past what you see? Can you love people past their failures? Can you love people past what they when they wrong do you and pray for people that spitefully misuse you? That made me started looking at things differently. You mm -hmm. know, when you hear somebody say something wrong about somebody else, can mm -hmm. you still just love them through that? Mm -hmm. And if you can't, then you know your heart's been breached. And you know, that's a powerful thing because when when people do you wrong, the first thing you want to do is lash out. Mm -hmm. But if you start praying for them and change your mindset and stay where you need to stay, then you know, you know. But if you can't do that, then your heart is free. Because loving somebody past them doing wrong to you or hurting you, you know, it's, it's hard. But that's what we have to do because that's what Christ done. Because look how Christ pardoned us for what we done. Mm -hmm. So we have to have that mindset too. I just wanted to add that, that uh, sermon that you give on that really made me look at people differently and made me think about what's in my mind, what's in my heart toward that individual person. Can I, even though they hurt me, made me cry, can I still love them through that, love them enough through, you know, all of that? So, yes, yeah, and that, I, I really looked at it differently. That's capacity, the capacity to love. And uh, that's also dying to self. Um, and some of that, Stephanie mentioned it, you know, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Uh, sometimes it's pride that's in operation. Okay. Yeah, it's pride that is in operation, and we don't realize it, but it is. Okay, and praying in the Holy Spirit helps to... Um, bring us out of that and be conformed to the image of his son. Okay. So embracing the word, believing the word, trusting the word is what we have to get to. Let me ask you this question. As we've come and I understand they've been enlightened to many of these things, have you seen some different outcomes? Have you been experiencing uh, a greater peace, um, a scenario that maybe was 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 troubling you, but you see it from a different perspective now, and uh, you see it change, or it's changing, or if it didn't change, you changed. Because <laughs> sometimes things aren't there to be changed; it's for you to change. 
That's been his purpose. That was his purpose. Yes, my uh, Yes, sir. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but you know, I always have something to say, but I've been asking God for patience. Ooh, what'd I do that for? But anyway, patience is a downfall of mine. So me praying in the spirit, according to the the book of fire, you know, the, the, the book. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire, yes. I have, God has really worked on my patience and making me be more calm toward people. And, and you know, I pray before I open my mouth now. I don't pray out loud. I, if I'm talking to somebody, I pray in my mind and in my head and in my spirit before I even open my mouth now. So, yes, it's really helped me with my patience. I, I guess I'm answering the question. I hope I'm answering your question. But, but yes, I've seen a difference. It's helped me and, and because I, I really just didn't have much patience. I plow to handle kind of person, you know. So, yes, it's helped me a lot. All right. Wonderful. This is good. Think Terry, your mic's open. Yeah, Bishop. Uh, he was asking that you see different outlook on things. Yeah, I see myself different, Bishop, in a lot of ways since I kind of lose control and start trusting God with my children, start showing them love, uh, not being judgmental or, or, or trying to criticize them, and and you know just just trusting God, and and I think it's changing me. <laughs> and, and uh uh having a different outlook you know just just you know just just i mean god is changing me to 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 really minister in a different way as far as loving people and and showing them love and 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 the people that i do that i can see hey i can see a change in their life i can see respect i can see honor bishop i can okay. see you know, in return of me doing that, I see the return. Okay. I see the return. And I just thank God for that. It's just a new way of operation since I done start, you know, uh, since God then gave me the way to do things now. Just just love on people and be that godly example, encourage them, you know, and you know, and let just let God do the rest. This is good. Just trust God. Trust God. That's that's called faith finding the way. This is by faith. This is by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. And so when we do trust God and we're going to get into talking about how trust happens, and that's when mature faith matures, it becomes trust. And so, and that comes to us, comes by way of us committing our ways unto the Lord. Come on, Stephanie, your hands up. I think that's so awesome. That because that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit was dealing with me on was um, you know, the trust factor. Mm. So like when you because you've taught that, you know, when your faith matures, it becomes trust. And then Deacon, mm -hmm. Deacon Terry just said, we got to trust God. And so um, when you say if faith finds the way, many times it's about going back to his word and finding that trust factor, you know, like, oh, God, you promised this. OK, well, I trust that you are the finisher of my faith. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to finish what you started. Mm -hmm. And so then when we say, okay, faith finds a way, now we're saying, okay, it's like maybe there is a greater impartation that you need, or maybe mm -hmm. there are some, um, you know, some distractions that we just need to eliminate. You know, things come to distract us all the time. And sometimes, you know, we may think that we're acting in faith, but in actuality, that was just a distraction. Like it, you wasn't even supposed to be going down that road, no way. Uh, and so, it just, it comes full cycle. So for okay. me, it was about making sure that like, 
I trust him. Like um, I kind of opened up with a little testimony about some things that had happened over here Saturday night. And I was ready to call the people. I was calling the landlord and I was like, hey, we need to do this, this and this. And because this ain't going to work. And the Holy Spirit stopped me and he was like, no, you seen that for a reason. You're responsible, right? If, if we're going to love our neighbors the way we say we're supposed to love our neighbor and, you know, you walking up and down the streets, decreeing and declaring, you know, this your neighborhood and this your street and you got authority and dominion. Where's all of those declarations that you decreed? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. And so, you know, that made me find a way that made me do something different, that made me um, put a demand on the seat of the word, that made me step out um, on his word and have confidence and courage um, to do something about it and go a different way. So. so what you're talking about is when we start talking about um, faith, we got to know that faith manifests the supernatural. Amen. So when we start talking about guarding your heart, Remember, your heart's been breached if what you begin saying out of your mouth is in alignment with the promise, like what you just described, Steffi, and the Holy Spirit brought it back to me. I thought you said you had dominion. I thought you said this was your street. I thought you said that. Come on. And so he was letting, making sure your heart getting breached. Now, listen to this. The scenario, the situation put some pressure on your faith. Because what made an appearance, and this is why we got to guard our heart. Yeah. This is why we got to have ears to hear. This is why we got to have constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So when he speaks to us, we hear his voice over all the noise that is going on in the world. Yeah. You hear his voice and he said, mm -mm, I thought you had dominion. Mm -hmm. I thought you said this was your territory. And then when you say that, you know that everywhere the soul your feet treads upon, he's given it unto you. So there's a word to confirm what he's reminding you of. You, like, oh, I know that. I know that. Because the word is hidden in your heart that you don't sin against him, that you don't forget who you are. You don't lose your identity and that you don't listen. You don't you don't uh, miss the mark. On, this ain't about us cussing and drinking and smoking weed no more no on, whatever's not a faith is seeing now we've been we've been catapulted above that okay our spirit man can't sin it's our our, our soul that we need to work on our, our mind will and emotions and our flesh i mean it brings separation from what has happened to us this supernatural born again experience so don't even fret Amen. Yourself. Don't fret no more. Just do what you need to do in order to stop being separated from what has happened to your spirit. Come on. Are you understand? You, you don't have to fret. Oh, Lord. I, I didn't say a, a, a bad word. Come on now. Good and bad can't come up out of the same cistern. Are you understanding? So now what happens is that thing that's on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost comes in and uproots it. Because you didn't forget who you were. I'm committing my ways. I'm committing my way, my, my code, my course of life, my moral character. I'm committing it unto you. I'm committing it to God. I ain't there yet. That's what I want to tell you. Don't get nerfed. You ain't there yet. You're still embracing the process. The process produces the product. I didn't say what was right. I didn't do what was right. But I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit until I'm saying and I'm doing what is right. I'm committing my way. When you're not committed to prayer and you're not committed to the word, you're never going to commit your way. And if you don't believe Okay, which is have faith, then you won't commit. Lack of faith is the cause of a lack of commitment. Commit that way, my course of life, my conduct unto the Lord, my moral character unto the Lord. 
Okay. And no, my spirit has been made perfect in him. That's supernatural. Now I'm dealing with my unrenewed mind, my will and my emotions. Okay. And once I get my soul in alignment with what happened to my spirit, my body, my flesh will no longer have any rule over me. Come on, Stephanie, you had your hand up. Bishop, I was just going to say right there where you were talking in, in the, when you were just saying that the Holy Spirit reminds you of, you know, the, the jurisdiction, um, the dominion that you have. Um, mm -hmm. It's amazing that we will submit to this low level authority and low mm -hmm. level covenant when God has said that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that I am Jesus, that I am the Lord, the Christ. And God just reminded me again, he was like, you got power, you got authority, you got dominion, you have Ooh. jurisdiction, you are of the kingdom, and yeah. the kingdom reigns, I am a king's kid, I am a God in this earth realm, a little G-O-D, I have mm. the jurisdiction and the power, why would I subject my jurisdiction, my dominion to someone who does not even believe in Christ? Mm -hmm. Why would I submit my, my, my power, my authority to a system that is already um, created to, to go against what God is doing? Mm -hmm. And so he, again, I'm telling you, <laughs> he was like, uh, ma'am, get yourself together. And so sometimes we got to think about that too. And I mean, because we're 360 degree leaders and God has given us the jurisdiction. That's what it means to be saved. That's what it means to have power. When you break that word down, you have the jurisdiction, you have that authority um, and all of heaven backs it up because it's his will. It's his will that every man be saved. And, and, and how we how we accomplish these things, we have to guard our heart. Amen. We can't let what we see breach our heart. Okay. We can't, we can't do that. And listen, one of the ways that happens is making sure, remember you said, Stephanie, that our mind and our heart are synonymous with one another. As a man thinketh, so is he, right? That's why the Apostle Paul put so much emphasis on renewing the mind and be not conformed to this world, this age, this time, this world system, these mass of men that are alienated from God. That is not you. You don't conform to that. You don't sub subjugate your authority to that. Mm -mm. You've been given, praise God, the fullness of the Godhead and dominion and power and authority, amen, uh, the same authority that Jesus walked in. OK, and you've got to know that. But if you don't renew your mind to those things, your heart can easily be breached. OK, but remember, a renewed mind brings about transformation. Transformation, which is a metamorphosis, is like into a butterfly, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. That butterfly cannot go back to being a caterpillar again. OK, so I know I've renewed my mind. I've guarding my heart with all diligence, making sure my heart's being not being breached. I don't get offended anymore because I know the offense is, is the is the bait of Satan. I don't I don't operate in suspicion because I have the gifts of the spirit. He can tell me what's right or wrong. I don't have to suspect it. I can just know because I know truth now. I know I know right from wrong. Is that all right? I know what the will of God is. I know what pleases the heart of the Father. This makes sense? So I'm going to guard my heart, make sure my heart doesn't get breached. I'm going to continuously operate in this supernatural life that's been given to me through Jesus Christ. Faith finds the way. What is this finding the way? If, 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 if I'm if I, I'm not functioning how I should in a moment, because of my faith, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost until I locate, I'm empowered, 
I'm reminded of, I understand how I need to be operating in this moment, in this, uh, based on this situation, this circumstance, or this condition. I'm not coming subject to a circumstance, situation, or condition. Because I have faith, I'm going to find the way. And the Holy Spirit's going to help me locate the way. Even if I have to have supernatural, a supernatural word of knowledge, a supernatural, Minister Deborah, word of wisdom, a rhema word from God or from somebody else. Amen. When Deacon Terry was 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 in a in a fretful place this morning, the Holy Spirit said, "Call your pastor." He called me, and the moment I had no idea what he was calling for. Do you hear me? None whatsoever. But the moment I heard his voice, the moment he mentioned it, there was a rhema word that was for him. Come on now. And when I began to release the rhema word for him, praise God, he immediately went into the supernatural. I heard him. He began to pray in tongues. He began to pray in the spirit. So the supernatural collided with the supernatural and everything that was trying to oppress him broke off of him instantly. Come on. And I not I didn't bind one devil. <laughs> Cause the heavens has already come on now. The sovereignty of God, the dominion and the power of God is already. He's under our feet. I didn't have to give him no attention. It ain't got nothing to do with him. I don't have faith in the devil. I have faith in Christ. A faith in the supernatural, and the supernatural that is upon us. Come on. <laughs> Are we good? Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Sam. Bishop, I had a situation. Uh, you asked the question, have we noticed a change in ourselves uh, since we've been embracing the supernatural? I was on my job the other day and um, I realized where uh, there was a change in myself. I had a, a person come up and they was, their attitude was obnoxious. I mean, they was really just out of control, just acting really silly. And uh, my first response, my first reaction was to respond to how they was acting and just jump on them. And I heard that the Holy Spirit just nudged me. And I said, mm. he said, you ain't have to give attention to this. So I felt myself calming all the way down. And God started speaking to me about uh, the supernatural. He said, when you don't have to respond to these different things, this is called meekness, control power. That's, that's how you operate in the supernatural. When you want to respond, the old man say, hey, you need to handle that. You just going to let them talk to you like that? He said, but I heard God say a soft answer turns away wrath. Mm -hmm. So I dumbed down and just got real calm, real mellow, just went to talking to the person real soft and everything. And um, when they come back out, I, I uh, wished them to have a blessed day and everything. They had come all the way down. I said, but look what would have happened if I had gave into that. That could have just really been an ugly moment. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, wow, God. He said, now this is what the supernatural looks like. Yeah, because a lot of times we look for the uh, operating in the supernatural. We cast out demons. We lay it, all of those things that we are supposed to do. But also look at it, the control power. When you don't have to say something, give attention to the negative stuff. You be on the better side because you what you're trying to do is bring peace. It's okay to be a peacemaker. And I said, okay, God, I see what you're saying right there. So I seen where I passed the test when the uh, the old Samantha would have been ready to, to target it, ready to jump on that, to correct it. God said, mm -mm, there's no need to even entertain that. So I noticed a change in myself with that. And I want to encourage you, and we got to change our mindset. We did, you didn't dumb down. What you did was you 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 manifest the supernatural. 
See, we got to break away. And I'm not saying this to you specifically, Pastor Sam. That was a teaching moment. We got to break away from this mindset that what we're doing is 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 belittling to us or something when really we've been we have been promoted we walk above this stuff now you understand because we've been birthed into the supernatural so we're operating really in the yeah we've been empowered we're operating in the supernatural we're operating in our place of promotion does that make sense so no longer does the things of this world uh, discombobulate us. It doesn't cause us to lose our integrity. This is what guarding your integrity looks like. Guard your heart, guard your integrity, because if you had responded without the supernatural and, and, and the meekness of the gift of the, of, of, of the, the fruit of the spirit of meekness operating in you, you, you would have could have destroyed your witness. So now you're not guarding your integrity anymore. And we don't make an excuse to justify it and say, well, they got loud with me. And so you you had to turn up with them because otherwise you were letting the devil, you know, do this. Come on now. See, that that's that's that Christian ease that people be being taught. You don't let the devil, you know, run over you when you found out if I operated in meekness. OK, the scripture said Jesus never said a mumbling word. Okay, that's the supernatural power of meekness when heaven will show up and give you the victory that glorified God. Now there's a different level of influence, a different level of respect, a different level of honor. If you run into that same person who knows they got wrong with you, but you did not Come on now. You did not get out of the integrity of who you are. Come on now. You did not get out of the supernatural. You you continued in the supernatural power of God flowing through you. Amen. And we brought about peace. Amen. We brought about peace. Okay. We brought about peace. So that is literally a, a perfect example of what living in the supernatural looks like. It's not theatrics. Do you hear me? It's not theatrics. Can God turn water to wine? Absolutely. Can, can he... Uh, 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 Give a man that had a limb missing and he supernaturally uh, replaced that limb right before I asked. Absolutely. But how often is that what people need to see? What they need to see is Christ working in you. His love, his kindness, his mercy. Okay. See, we've kind of been 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 slick program to perform. So we'd say in that that we hadn't seen the supernatural unless folk laying out all over the floor. And don't get me wrong, I'm for all of that. But how are we treating one another? How are we interacting with someone that's lost, someone that needs to find the way? Your faith found the way. And because you guard your heart and you guard your integrity, you never get out of the way, even though situation, circumstance and opportunity presented to yourself to get out of the way. But your faith finds a way, commits to the way, continues in the way. And it come on now and it glorifies God. Not only that, your influence just increased. And all of heaven will come and back you up. Don't you know because Jesus never said a mumbling word, all he had to do was make a request and 72,000 angels would have showed up and turned that place out. Do you hear me? 
but he never said anything, Minister Deborah, because he said, this is what I came for. I came to die. Come on. And me and God already talked about this. I, this cup can't be passed, so I'm going to just agree with his will. Glory to God. And I have need that this same power that's working in me be able to work in you. I came to give my life for you. I came that you would be, come on, a reconcile back to the Father. I only came to do the will of the Father. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to operate in this supernatural that's upon me. Hmm? No man taketh my life. I lay it down. You could have said something, but I laid my life down that Christ would be exalted, that he would be lifted up so that men would be drawn to him. This makes sense? Yes, Barbara. Yes, sir. I have a, a, a couple of questions, if that's okay. If you have someone in your household and they were talking about somebody and you corrected them and said, well, why would you say that about that person? And why would you call them that name, an ugly name? And I said, you don't talk about people like that. That ain't right. You know, I said, uh, I don't care what they done to you. There's no reason to call them out of their name. Just call them what their name is, you know. And then you try to encourage them to do better and do the right things and to, you know, invite them to service and to, you know, I'm ministering to this person, but I'm not getting nowhere, nowhere. What can I do? Continue to pray for them. Continue to just pray for them. Continue to stand the integrity of the scriptures and trust God with them. Trust God with them. See, one thing we must understand is that we can't change people. People have to choose to change. And if nothing changes, nothing changed, nothing changes. And so we, per get, we present this gospel, we guard our hearts, we guard our integrity, we guard the vision, okay? And uh, we don't look back. So we just continue to pray for them. Okay, let them know that, listen, I understand, you know, your, your frustration, I understand your anger, but you do know there's a more excellent way, right? This is an opportunity for us to teach the gospel. Yeah. Well, let, they let, have let, a, let. a small child also, and the child sees me trying, but that child don't know anything about God. He, he don't even, and I'm, I'm just so scared for him. Well, the thing to do is, again, it's the opportunity to teach. And, and the main thing is to not be offended with them. Because once we get to the place of offense, the grace of God is no longer upon us. To, and the anointing of God is no longer upon us to destroy the yoke. So was you praying the Holy Spirit for them? Not praying in the natural, praying the Holy Ghost for them that the Holy Spirit may reveal to you Amen. The divine strategy in order to reach them. It could be one word. Okay. It could be one word. Uh, it may be a question that, that the Lord uh, 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 tells you to ask them. It may be something he tells you to teach them. I don't know, but he'll give us the words to speak to them. So the main thing is that we guard our heart. We don't let what they're doing or what they've done offend us to where our heart is breached and we no longer have the continuity of the Holy Spirit in operation and us to minister effectively to them. And listen at this. And don't, you, you talked about patience. <laughs> don't fret 
because cause it's, it's taking longer or they did not respond. Okay. Just know that this incorruptible, indestructible seed of the word, amen, it works. And don't ever lose your confidence in this incorruptible, indestructible word of God. Okay. And so when we do those things, we bathe it in prayer. Okay. Prayer always waters the seed. Come on, even the seed that is in you. Okay. And we continue until the Lord tells us to do something different. Okay. Remember, God was patient with us. He was patient with us. <laughs> he never threw us away. He showed us mercy. He was still loving and kind to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's not that's not agreeing with the behavior. That's not even tolerating the behavior. OK. But us is us ministering Thank to you. them. It's us ministering to them. And when we pray in the Holy Spirit, he will give us a divine strategy to reach them. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing to them. Just need to be enough oil on you. Come on now, when they come in your presence, the yoke gets destroyed. And that's what happens when we earnestly begin to intercede and pray for someone. That makes sense? Remember, I talked to you that I believe that the supernatural is going to be on y'all so that you won't even have to open your mouth. You step in the room and yokes get destroyed. You step in the room and people get healed. Does that make sense? You step in the room, praise God, and because of the, the oil and the anointing and the presence of God that is on you, people cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? I want to be saved. I know I shouldn't be talking like this. I shouldn't feel like that about people. It'd be like, glory to God, it's on. And then you lead them through the sinner's prayer. Is that okay? That's that thing that Deacon Terry was talking about. That's that thing we yet have to get delivered from. Okay? That's that thing where we got to trust the supernatural Okay, we got to trust the Holy Spirit's working. Sometimes we like to be in control. That's why you have antics and theatrics. Isn't that something? She got disconnected when I was in the meat of the matter. Okay. Did y'all get that? I think I froze. I went out and came back. Okay. We got to trust the supernatural. Trust, trust the, the love of God. Trust the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Be led by his spirit. Okay. And 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 that that that's a thing right there, knowing that we're being led by a spirit. That's trusting in the supernatural. Because if he don't tell you to say nothing, you don't say nothing. He don't tell you to do nothing, you don't do nothing. That's trust right there. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's something right there. Because we like putting our hands to stuff. We like putting our mouths on things. Even though we think we're doing the right thing. I'm about to give them the word today. Come on. We pray prayers to when we're praying amiss. God tell you, I ain't told you to say nothing. But here you come. Now you want to pray this prayer. Come on, it ain't even a prayer that need to be prayed. Mm 
Hmm? All I needed you to do was show up. That's all I needed you to do. I didn't tell you to say nothing. I didn't tell you to do nothing. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. That's trusting the supernatural. That's, listen, that's having confidence that the anointing and the anointed one dwells on the inside of me. I don't have to open my mouth and say nothing. Because I know when I showed up, he showed up. And when he shows up, he can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. I am just a representative. Amen. <laughs> Ooh. Our lifestyle can win someone. He just wants them to hang with you. Where they didn't hear you cussing the whole day. Next day they with you, they only cuss a few times. <laughs> oh, whatever it's doing. I'm just using that for an example. You know what I'm saying? But because of the grace and the orders upon your life, it's transforming them. It's seeing that it really is possible because of the environments they live in, that's all they hear. That's all they see. Everybody mad at everybody. Everybody calling each other out their name. Everybody doing what they shouldn't be doing. And even these just them just be in an environment that is manifesting the supernatural power of his resurrection, the character. Come on now, the moral correctness, hello, the love and the kindness. You're not judging them. You're not critical of them. Come on out. And I, I want you to know something. Some of them is just trying you. They're just testing you to see if they can provoke you out of your integrity. That's why I'm saying if the Holy Spirit don't tell you to say nothing, you don't say nothing. Holy Spirit don't tell you to do nothing, you don't do nothing. Come on, dig it, Terry. Yeah, Bishop, when you was teaching there and I could see the way my life can change in that area. I mean, even in my home, Sometimes, you know, your spouse might not do what you think <laughs> she's supposed to do or do something that 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 you uh, or don't do nothing that you think she's supposed to. But, you know, in return of that, you know, I just I just continue to serve bishops. I don't say nothing. You know, at one time I might not say nothing, but just my face expression. Uh huh. Your attitude oh, changed. I keep a lot of shit, but you could still see it on my face, and that, <laughs> that wasn't working. But now, Bishop, I can sit back and I can smile. I can continue to serve and love, and and man, I mean, the difference that it made in my home now. And, Come and, on. and God, I know it's it's God working in me. And I just thank God for that, because at one time, I wasn't in this place, Bishop. I understand. One, quick to say something. If someone's <laughs> right, I'm going to say something. <laughs> if I, and then I got to a place where I, I, wouldn't, I was holding it in, but, hey, your spouse going to still know it. I mean, she's going to around you enough. She's going to know what's going on on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So. I thank God I've been freed in that. I can I can continue to love in spite of and 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 I went to another level of serving my wife, you know, when when God didn't equip me the way he didn't equip me. And I got an amazing marriage now. I mean, you Come know, on. peace in my home and hey, it don't nothing. My wife can't distract me no more. No matter, you know, no matter what. I mean, you know, I'm gonna continue. 
to smile. I'm going to continue to love. I'm going to continue to serve because I trust God, Bishop. I don't got to a place of trusting God now with my wife, with my children, with other people now. And, and you know, I know I got to continue to stay in council of fellowship with God to stay in the place that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I just think I thank God for that. When you was talking, man, I could see all the results in, in my home and in, in my children's life and in my life, how God working in me to better the return I'm getting. You know, that return is, uh, it'll make you feel good. You know, when you start getting that return back from when you done serve, when you done loved and when you done did yeah. that, that feel good then. And I yeah. just thank God for it. So this is the thing, what you, what you're describing is you have committed thy way unto the Lord. It's irregardless of a person's behavior. You have been commanded to love her as Christ loves the church. It's not about how she performs. It ain't about what she does or doesn't do. You have committed thy way unto the Lord. You've committed to love. That's it. Bottom line. So now you get a heavenly response. Okay, now you get peace. Now you have joy. Now you have experiencing success. Okay, praise God. Now, I, I'm just going to tell you, she respects you more now than she ever have in her life. Because women need love and men need respect. And neither of them is based on performance. It's called committing thy ways unto the Lord. And once we learn that, that's with anyone and anything we're dealing with, we get offended at things and justify it with scripture. <laughs> or some religious perspective, but it's not God's perspective. But the Holy Spirit is there to make sure that we maintain the supernatural upon our lives. We got to embrace it. We got to expect it. I expect to live in the supernatural. Is that good? But we got to guard our hearts. We got to guard our integrity. Okay. We got to guard the vision. Is this good? And it comes through constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says for us to fret not thyself because of evil doers. Well, when you are embracing the supernatural peace of God, you don't fret no more. Most people are only in, they've made peace with God. That's uh, getting born again. Okay. But once you embrace this supernatural, you can begin experiencing the peace of God. That supernatural peace that comes by way of the Holy Spirit, which is God's holy influence and his, his person and his power operating in you. And you shall receive power. What type of power? Doing this power, supernatural power, which includes the fruit of peace. It's supernatural. Peace that surpasses all understanding. That is when you begin functioning in dominion. Once the enemy robs you of your peace, you lose your dominion. Uh oh. Because your heart's been breached. So I got to get back to the place of peace. So I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost until peace comes back. I'm embracing the supernatural. Knowing I'm supposed to have peace. Jesus gave me peace. He left me peace. Peace I leave with you. Am I right? We're going to live peaceably with all men. Is that correct? Somebody say next level living. 
supernatural life. Supernatural living. But we got to guard our hearts. And then guarding our integrity. Remember, our sufficiency is not of ourselves, it's of God. All we have to do is commit our way unto the Lord. He will back you up. This peace is a keeping peace. But when we don't guard our heart with all diligence, what happens is we begin to fret. Don't get nervous. If you begin to fret, just pray in the Holy Spirit. Because you're going to deal with your infirmity. You just took on an infirmity. So I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit. He's going to deal with my infirmities, the weakness that is in my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Right? My heart has just been breached. It's been pierced with fiery darts. He's going to get me back in alignment. I'm going to get back into my place of dominion and power and authority. I'm going to have whatsoever I saith. I'm going to call those things to be not as though they were. Come on. Are we good now? We're talking about maintaining what we've obtained. We don't have to live roller coaster lives. Mm -hmm. Come on, any questions or comments? We have five minutes. Somebody say stretch. The supernatural is stretching us. Faith finds the way. What's the way? Jesus. The Word. The Holy Spirit. Where every, as He's the solution to every problem that we may ever face in this dimension. We must know that and trust that. Trust that to the place where we respond in the supernatural or, or, or what's opposing us in a supernatural way. And as I share with you, when we practice these things, and, and remember, you guys have been asked to pray in the Holy Ghost for a minimum of 15 minutes every day. The more that you do that, the more the supernatural is being activated on you. And you're going to find these little aggravating things, the little things that used to distract you, used to trouble you, uh, used to, you know, breach your heart. You're going to find yourself less and less uh, getting offended, less and less responding to someone uh, uh, who, who treated you indifferently, indifferently. You're going to see that there's going to be less and less incidents of those things to be happening. What's going to happen? Your increase is going, your, your influence is going to go up. And your ability to effectively witness Christ is going to increase. You know what happens? We start seeing people get born again. We start seeing evangelism take place. Can y'all see that? And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You shall become a witness unto me. Oh my. God's doing great things through you. City to city, state to state, nation to nation. Expect your family members to get born again. Expect your co-workers to get born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Expect uh, uh, friends. They're either going to be driven towards Christ or driven away. 
Okay, because workers of evil cannot stand in the midst of light. Okay, light reproves darkness. It's okay. It's okay. Fret not thyself. It's okay. God will surround you with 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 divine people in your life that's going to bring increase that's going to add to you your ability to achieve and to do and to become everything that he desires desires for you to become okay know this the holy spirit's telling me to tell you this i know disengaging isn't easy but if you would engage in the with the holy ghost your disengaging will be no problem it's only when you try to disengage in the flesh because your emotions, you're too emotional. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't love people. It doesn't mean that you're better than anybody. It's just divinely aligning yourself with the word of God, with the will of God, with the person of the Holy Spirit, so that God can do what he wants to do in the earth. It's no longer about you. You belong, it's bigger than you. This is about the Christ that is in you. It's bigger than you. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you tonight, and we give you honor and glory and praise for your ministry to us the testimonies, oh God, the understanding that has come to us, the faith that arised in us. We give you thanks for these things, oh God. Uh, be God in us, to us, and through us. Have thine way. God, help us to be the vessels you need us to be, God, in these last and evil days. This 21st century time of evangelism, Lord, show yourself strong. Show yourself strong, O oh God, destroying yokes, lifting heavy burdens, setting captives free, healing the sick, raising the dead if necessary, Lord God, but most of all, causing men to call upon the name of Jesus and to renew their minds so they can show that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We praise you. We honor you. We are humbled that you would choose us and include include us, God, in the ultimate plan that you have to win man back to you. So we appreciate you, everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone that will hear this in the future. We pray your blessing. We pray, oh God, your greatness upon them, God, that we will all finish our course and that we will all glorify you. Amen. In Jesus' name, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is good news. This is good news, everybody. Amen. Guard your heart. Guard your integrity. Guard the vision. Don't look back. Stay focused. Amen. Stay focused. So let's worship in our giving tonight. Amen. Return of the Lord's tithe, the giving of our offerings. Let's stay focused. We, we, we're getting ready to come out of this place that we've been in and get back into more public uh, worship and assembly. That all takes resources. So we got to stay on point, stay consistent, keep growing. Amen. We got to continue to add people, teach them the principles of God so that we may go forth and do what we need to do. Amen. Thank you all for your faithfulness. Thank you for your trusting the principles of God, sowing of seeds, return of the Lord's time. You guys can do that through PayPal, GiveLify, uh, checks in the mail, and Cash App. Amen. And uh, Stephanie will put those things in the chat or whatever so you can have it. But please, 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 sow where you're going. Uh, if you have no seed in the ground, you can't certainly expect to harvest. Know as long as the earth remain, there's seed time and harvest. Put purpose on your resources, on your money. Okay, put purpose on it. Because anything that doesn't have a purpose, there's no reason to exist. And if we will put what God wants first, he'll make sure that we have everything that we need. Okay, because he supplies it. He supplies it. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Jireh. 
Okay. So as we align with his word, his will, and his principles, the principles don't change. They're constant. Amen. And so do those things. Do those things. And we, we thank God for you. Um, let's see. Friday night, we're going to be, I've been, the revival was canceled this week. But Friday night, I've been asked to be online with Bishop Calvin Ramsey um, and uh, teaching on sanctification. So I would love for you guys to join me if you're, if you're free. It's going to be at 6 o'clock. Uh, I'll send the link out to you guys. And uh, if you can get on there, it will be good. People from all over the nation will be in that, uh, that session. Um, so I was humbled that he would call and request that I be a part of that, that teaching series. Okay. Um, what else am, why are we missing, Stephanie? Dig and tear. Nothing right now, Bishop. Okay. So August the 20th, we're gonna be in-person worship at King's Dome Worship Center. Okay. What time is that gonna be, Stephanie? I don't have a time down just yet. Okay. We'll get the time to you, but we want you to invite everybody out. It's going to be great. Amazing. All right. And I expect for the presence of God to meet us in that place. Great time to bring those who you've been ministering to sharing the gospel with. Amen. Let them experience uh, the presence of God and uh, let him continue to transform their life. Okay. Amen. You can tear anything. Well, y'all get a chance to make my son Terrell that that day. He'll be there. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the fruit of the labor, the prayers. Uh, he's been on uh, while he was away. Amen. And now he's home. And now we'll get to see him in person. Okay. Won't you all pray with me as well? Uh, one of my students in Memphis. Little, little, her son, little Eli, uh, Eli for uh, uh, Jasper's son. Um, he's having open heart surgery in the morning. Okay. He's good. I spoke with him yesterday. I spoke with him today and he trusts God. He's a, he's, he's a man of God. He's a miracle. He was never even supposed to live. And so he's a walking miracle. And so the miracle working power of God is all over him, just all over him. So it will just be a, 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 a procedure that he's walking through just to take care of some things. But he's good. He told me, God got me. Amen. And I said, yes, he does. All right. He's, he's eight years old. And so glory to his name. So pray with me tomorrow in the morning that'll be going. He's at Labana here in Memphis. Uh, also pray for uh, one of our mission team people. She's a part of the Cathedral of Worship uh, 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 there in Quincy, Illinois. Guys, let's pray for our kids. Okay, let's pray for these young people. Uh, uh, Lisa Crow, Stephanie, you know Lisa, don't you? Lisa Crow, her nephew, who she raised like a son, uh, they found himself hanging in his room because they believe he was doing a YouTube challenge. Okay, 11 years old. And so pray for our children. Uh, rely on the supernatural. If you discern something, um, you know, investigate it. Holy Spirit, show me what's going on with my child, with my grandchild, uh, whether they grown or whatever. Okay. Amen. The Holy Spirit can uh, give us a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge concerning them, uh, because the enemy is not going to have our children. Okay. Not going to do it. All right, so pray for her as well. I got one more be with us that day, uh, Bishop LaBon. She's on now. She faithful. She be on on Wednesday, so, so she'll be she'll be in fellowship with us on the twenty two. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you, LaVon. Amen. Amen. Me too. Can't wait. Yeah, and Brandy, we want to see you too. 
Praise God. <laughs> yes, Brandy. Come on out. Tara. Amen. Glory yeah. to God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. She said, yes, sir. Amen. All right. Brother Westbrook, God bless you, sir. Thank you for being on. And and I pray we're going to see you that day, too. I'm, I'm pretty sure we will. And uh, LaQuisha. So listen, Minister Deborah, you have anything? No, sir. Enjoyed everything that I heard. <laughs> Amen. Tell Constance we're praying with her. Amen. Always enjoy when she's able to 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 jump on with us. Yeah, she called me today. It's all <laughs> hyped up. <laughs> okay. All right. Amen. Tell her we asked her about her praying with her. Amen. And always. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. All right, guys. If nothing else, Deacon Terry, bless the offering. Father, we just thank you tonight, God. We thank you for all the seeds that's been sown tonight, God. And we just pray your blessings, God, on every seed that's been sown in this ministry, God. We just decree a hundredfold blessings on the seed, yeah. God, supply a thousand times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's supernatural increase upon you. Amen. Amen. Believe Amen. for it. Believe for it. Believe for it. Agree with it. Supernatural is on my money. Amen. That you don't have to be concerned and fretting over the cares of life. Okay. You have more than enough. More than enough. You'll be able to give to every good work. Okay. Amen. You won't be fretting. School is going to be fine. Going back to school. I mean, all those things. Trust God with your finances. Amen. Come in covenant with him. Partner with him. I guarantee you, you and him can do more with what you have than you by yourself. Okay. I promise you that. I promise you that. Okay. And not because I say it, but because the word of God says it. Okay. He will multiply your seed. He will take a little and turn it into a lot. Okay. And that you never lack another day in your life. Okay. Never, ever, ever. Okay. Praise God. So partner with God. Give. Time. Trust him. He's faithful. All right. Love you guys. Pray for me. Praying with you guys and looking forward to seeing you on Sunday, if not before. All right. Have a great night.